Welcome to the Hello World Guys, this is another episode of the Advanced C++ SFML game series and in this video we are going to continue by creating a much better uh, looks for our, by creating a much better experience for the player by adding animations to our game. So in order to create animations, let's get straight into it. Let's first of all create a new class here and call that animation. So I'm going to go here, go add and choose class, uh, class actually. Yeah, and you can of course uh, choose whatever name you like. Of course, I'm going to call this animation, and uh, we are going to store it in animation.hncpp. It's not going to inherit for anything. Just default settings. Let's create that, and uh, it should create both the header and the implementation file for us. Now, in this animation class, we are going to uh, basically create a method that would allow us to get the correct uh, uh, texture that we are supposed to have for the animation and a bunch of other stuff too. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get started for implementing this class. To get started, we are going to create a public member function here. So let's do that. And first, let's just go ahead and include sfml slash graphics.h so that we can use that. And we are going to create a function that returns a texture called get texture. And uh, this is all right. And we are also going to create an update method here that has delta time. So what this get texture will do, update is pretty obvious. It will just update the animation. Why we need to use an update, we'll get into that in a few seconds. And uh, as far as get texture is concerned, the reason we do that is because uh, this will basically return the uh, whatever texture the animation is currently supposed to be using. So we are basically going to be using like texture based like uh, sprite sheet animation. So this is basically going to help us do that. And uh, for the private variables, I'm going to create a float called time and set that to zero. And uh, that's all awesome. And let's go in here and implement animation update and get texture. And now what we are going to do is go under animation.h and uh, you can see we have got this. Let's create a uh, structure here called anim frame, which is going to represent one frame of the animation and which is going to create a time which uh, represents whatever time this frame is supposed to be played at. And we are going to create a texture uh, called texture and let's just go here and create a constructor that basically initializes these two uh, fields like that and I'm going to implement this constructor here instead of implementing in a separate file this is a pretty short thing and in here we are going to create a std colon colon vector of anim frames and we are going to create a constructor that accepts a vector of anim frames and that should allow us to create our animation and let's go in here and implement that constructor as well and now what we can do is we can basically initialize our frames with that value and in the update method we are all we are going to do is this time that we are keeping track of it's a time that has passed since the animation started so we'll just say time plus equal delta time and uh, that should essentially allow us to keep track of uh, how many seconds have passed and that should help us determine what text data to call since we uh, since we have might have a variable frame rate we are going to do a uh, animation that's going to be based on seconds so uh, it's going to be based on like standard time. So good, let's go in here and create a, a range based for loop here that goes over each frame in frames. Now if in order to determine which frame to display we are going to check if the frame dot time is greater than or equal to the current time and if that is the case we are going to return the frame dot texture or else if, uh, if all of those fail which means uh, we pa got past some incorrect data or something then we are going to just return an empty texture. Now why is this uh, the way we are doing this and uh, not some other way? Uh, now uh, you can of course uh, see that this is going to basically work but this does require us that we uh, specify our animations in a reverse manner. So we need to specify the last frame then the second last and that. Uh, you might want to implement some way of uh, uh, making it so that uh, it is order independent. We can specify the frames in any order and it will still work. So if you uh, want to try that out then you can maybe try that out and uh, comment down below if you manage to get it working and also how do you do that. But I think for the, our purposes this kind of works. We can just specify them in a particular order and uh, it's not going to be too hard and let's just do that and we are going to uh, go ahead uh, first of all let me go to animation.h and I'm going to of course create a variable called length here because uh, uh, an animation needs a length to determine when to wrap around so this time when exceeds a certain amount should wrap around so what we are going to do is uh, we are of course going to initialize our length like that 
and we are going to go ahead and use a while loop here so while our time is greater than length we will subtract the length from time now you might say why not just use an if statement here and uh, set the time to zero or subtract the length from the time uh, the reason we don't just set it to zero is because for example if the time is 1.3 then we would like it to be 0 0.3 uh, instead of making it uh, you know uh, something like zero just we would like to be 0 0.3 if the time suddenly jumped uh, this should not uh, uh, so happen like a extreme amount so it should be pretty much like an if statement most of the time but if the user experiences a sudden frame drop or something then this can help to prevent the animations from kind of going wrong and of course this is not necessary that you do it this way another way to do it an alternative is to basically convert the length to an integer basically remove the point part not round it just remove the point part and subtract it and that should give us the actual only point part and we can set the time to that kind of I guess uh, but that might not work correctly if because if the length might not always be one second but for example say the length is 1.5 seconds and uh, the time suddenly jumped to 3.1 seconds, uh, seconds due to a sudden frame drop and we will subtract 1.5 from it which will give us 1.6 it will still be greater we will subtract again and it will give it 0 0.1 and that means that the animation is still going to look nice even if the user experiences a sudden frame drop so that's uh, that's pretty much uh, all we need we can say that we have got our basic animation system kind of complete and now we can start implementing some animations inside of mario to see how well that goes here what i'm going to uh, do before we actually go to mario is that i'm going to make these have default values so that we can just kind of uh, initialize it without having to call the constructor because that can be a bit problematic so let's just have it uh, have these have default values and uh, that's awesome and now let's go under animation.cpp i actually reverse the order here this is supposed to be time is greater than or equal to frame dot time but i kind of did it the other way around which uh, was not really gonna work so let's go ahead and go under mario.h i have created an animation here called run animation now for idle and for falling or jumping we are going to use a single frame so we don't really need an animation for that we can just use the texture directly but uh, for running we of course have an animation so we'll need to only create an animation for that in the begin method we we'll do this in the begin because uh, only in the begin method have all the resources finished loading uh, or if in without the begin method the resources have not been loaded and initializing it there would not work so we are going to say a run animation is equal to an animation for the length we are going to say 0 0.5 and then we are going to pass a list of things here uh, animation frames maybe we'll set the length to 0 0.6 actually and uh, for the frame first frame we are going to say 0 0.4 for its time because it's, uh, all frames are going to be evenly distributed and this is going to represent the run 3.png in my uh, resources slash textures folder right now i have got uh, a idle.png a jump.png and a run 1 through 3.png so we are going to say run 3.png and copy it for run 2 and run 1 and we are going to change this 0 0.2 and 0, 0.0 respectively and not that we are specifying them in this order because that's the way we have tuned our animation system to work so in the update what we can do is for example we can just say run animation dot update and pass it the delta time and when we are drawing we can just say run animation here uh, dot get texture and that should give us the correct texture that we are supposed to draw and when I run this what you should see is that we do indeed get a running Mario of course we only want Mario to display the running animation when he is running but for now he will display the animation all the time but it does work so let's see and uh, what you should be able to see is that indeed Mario is displaying a running animation this animation might be a bit too slow for your liking so what you can do is go up here change the total time to 0.45 and in here you can maybe make it this one uh, this one for example 1.5 and this one uh, uh, 3.0 yeah so that is going to cause uh, it to be a bit faster since the whole thing is going to be slower so let's just go ahead and uh, do that and see if it works or not and what you should see is that it hopefully does work so you can see that uh, yeah that that actually feels a lot better so mario does seem to be running and uh, uh, the problem is that we only want mario to display the running animation if uh, uh, he is actually you know running so we don't want him to display the running animation all the time so what we can do to uh, so how can we go ahead and kind of uh, fix that 
path data between the update and draw functions. I have created a variable, internal variable here called texture to draw. And when we are drawing with the renderer, we just draw the texture to draw. And uh, we are going to set this texture to draw in our this function. So uh, you can see we have got, we are checking velocity.x is less than or greater than, and then based on that, we are setting facing left. If this is not true, then that means that the velocity is between negative 0 0.2 and 0 0.02. And that probably means that Mario is kind of stationary, basically. So if that is the case, we'll just, first of all, by the way, before we do anything else, we will set texture dot draw, uh, texture to draw to run animation dot get texture. However, if we are not moving, then we are going to set it to uh, resources, colon, colon, texture, and pass idle dot png. And uh, after that, we are going to override this. If we are not grounded, then we are automatically going to set it to texture dot draw to uh, the jump dot png. And this is basically it. So first of all, by default, it will be the running animation. If that's not the case, then it will be the idle one. So if we, we are stationary, it will be the idle one. But if we are not uh, on the ground, which means we are in the air, it's going to be the jumping one. So that should pretty much make our Mario a lively and uh, animated character. So let's go ahead and see uh, whether it works or not like that. So what you should be able to see is that, yeah, you can see it uh, uh, runs. And we should get a, you can see Mario just displayed the jumping one when he was doing that. And uh, when he's not in the ground, and when he is, you can see Mario can walk like that. And we can kind of make Mario walk. And if he is off the ground, then he does this. So we can kind of make him jump and also stand at one place and uh, he can also walk with the animation. So yeah, that's pretty awesome and this is pretty much it with this video. In the next video, we'll implement more stuff like sounds to our game because currently it's just without sounds and kind of boring. So we'll do that in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for that and like and subscribe so that you don't miss that. And share this video with other people as well and uh, I'll see you in the next one and bye.